Welcome to Talent Tech Today, a video blog hosted by our company Talent Rise, a talent consulting and executive search firm based in Chicago. My name is Carl Cutsmode and I lead the talent and technology consulting practice at Talent Rise. Today, I will be interviewing Salim Kaja, the COO and co founder of Work Llama, and the brains behind their innovative AI based talent acquisition technology solution that we'll be hearing about today. Our goal in the next 20 to 30 minutes is to provide a more human data point to HR technology buyers as they evaluate the many potential options in the marketplace for their organizations. Today, secondly, I also want to put a spotlight on some of the more innovative and often lesser known companies in the market that are bringing to, to the marketplace a different perspective, hence uh, our conversation today. So now I'm going to turn it over and, and ask a few questions of Salim. And my first question that I always like to ask is, tell us your founder's story. You know, how did you come up with the idea for Work Llama? What inspired you? And then what is what is Work Llama? Carl, thank you uh, <clears throat> very much for this opportunity. We really appreciate it. Um, yeah, so, you know, um, our journey kind of started out um, like anyone, right? You're opportunistic, trying to see um, a need in the market and you jump in uh, with a solution uh, to see how you can build a business out of it, right? So in 2016, um, you know, because of our former relationships and, and um, you know, uh, history in logistics and supply chain space, we were approached by a lot of the warehouse uh, management executives to see if we could help them with a multi-sided platform to source talent, right? So the whole uh, on-demand staffing was the talk around that time. So we said, why not? We had already built a multi-sided platform for, uh, you know, uh, like an Uber for healthcare kind of a market, which basically connected supply and demand in a in a real time um, setup, right? So we said, why not? Let's do that uh, for sourcing talent for um, you know warehouses. And as we thought about it, we said, okay, we also want to uh, think about what else, right? It's not just let's go build a platform and sell it. And we, we started thinking about what else does this really mean? And when we originally started, the idea was to basically help uh, work, uh, help people work when they wanted to work, where they wanted to work, and in the process, kind of find happiness in work, so to speak, right? Yep. Um, <clears throat> so we launched with Gap in two different markets, uh, very successful, looked at, you know, everything the platform did extremely well. Uh, being a tech company, right, we heavily leveraged uh, a very robust referral management capability, which to date in the market, you know, separates us significantly from any other solution out there. And we were very successful by coming out of it, you know, we realized we are a tech company, we are not geared to be a staffing company. So we then said, okay, let's take a step back and see what we have built, what worked for us, and then, you know, what is it that we want to be when we grow up, so to speak, right? And, um, <clears throat> you know, when we did that, we, we're surprised to see that talent happens to be the forgotten piece of the puzzle. Um, you know, everyone's extremely focused on internal processes and creating internal efficiencies, but nobody's really looking at, uh, you know, talent is, is a neglected component, right? And coming from, you know, being outsiders to the industry, it gave us a unique perspective on what was happening there. And we, extended our original philosophy of right helping people find happiness through work and then we said okay how do we do that um, in building our solution so we said we'll take a platform approach and then we said why not apply the uh, retail consumer journey model to talent right companies spend so much time and money to attract customers right treat them the right way retain customers and make them brand ambassadors, right? It's the same concept when you think about it that can be applied to talent, right? So, you know, attract talent, right? Treat them well 
and make them your brand ambassador. So they start bringing more talent into your ecosystem. Right. It's so that, it's that yeah. whole employment experience or candidate experience that you're talking about. And if a, if a person has a great experience, they want to bring their friends and refer more people. If they have a bad experience. You have the opposite. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. So, um, I mean, <clears throat> you know, also, right. Referrals tend to be a source of, you know, high quality talent at low cost. Uh, and usually, you know, culturally, they are a very good fit for your organization. There's a lot of benefits of that, right? right? So when we said that is the approach we are taking, you know, we decided to build a platform that engages in the entire talent journey, right? From job discovery, through the hiring process, through placement and post-placement engagement and ongoing uh, relationships, so to speak. And by building such a solution, our, our dream is to have enough data sets where we can actually guide someone when they first interact with the brand to say, hey, look, you know, you are trying to be, let us say, a Java developer, but we have seen enough people who have gone through this talent journey that look like you with the same profile and ended up being a extremely successful product manager. So maybe that's a career you want to consider, right? So now if you think about it, it fits well. I mean, it's in line with our original vision of helping people find happiness in work, so to speak. Right. So, so it's it's so the philosophy that you have is unique in that you're trying to use data around people who have applied to jobs and gotten jobs and then help look at that data and help inform future talent that's looking at jobs or applying to jobs and saying, hey, you know, you've applied for this, but have you considered this because people who've applied for this other job might, you know, have proven to be very successful in that area and you might want to do that too. Yeah. And so you're, you're proactively offering them an opportunity to maybe be in a better, happier place with a better fit opportunity. Yep, yep. <clears throat> it's that, that whole a uh, career pathing kind of a concept, but it's it's applied right from the very beginning and not once you are within an organization, right? It's, it's at every touch point, uh, you're trying to keep, you know, guiding the people in, in the right way so they can wake up and say, I can't wait to go to job or go to my, you know, job and not say I need to go to my job to pay bills, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and does your platform replace a company's applicant tracking system where they've invested thousands and thousands of dollars and they've accumulated millions of resumes? Or does it an overlay that enhances that tool in some way? Yeah, <clears throat> um, you know, our, our solution enhances the capabilities of an ATS, right? It, it kind of sits um, next to an ATS, so to speak, right? The way we like to describe is a, you have an ATS, you get work llama and you're good to go, right? Because we are very talent focused, right? ATSs are more internal process, internal process efficiencies, right? They have some talent piece, which is very thin in the, in the front office side, mm -hmm. right? But they're mostly mid office and back office focused. Therefore, we, we are a very good complement to ATS systems. And, it, and I know one of the things we've talked about that was kind of innovative and unique is, is how it uses AI and tools to facilitate that candidate experience with scheduling and other things. Can you speak a little bit more about that? Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> what we do when, you know, talent first interacts with the brand is we instantly deploy our conversational bot, which you know, in a, in a matter of two steps, right? Consumes a resume and creates a rich profile for the user, you know, as opposed to asking 20 questions on, hey, tell me your skills, tell me your this, tell me your that, right? And it, it basically consumes a resume, instantly creates a profile and then asks if the user wants to update it, right? And then as part of that, you know, the bot administers uh, again, right, based on what the bot learned from the parse resume, hey, you know, we need a skills assessment test or we need a competency assessment test 
or you know if you're someone who is working in let's say uh, a, a you know office clerical type of position right a one-way video interview or a listening comprehension test so there's a lot of things that you know the bot does where the talent experience right is pretty seamless it's happening in one unified uh, type of um, you know um, one unified flow where you're instantly creating rich talent profiles uh, that then helps your internal process at the same time provides that memorable candidate experience. So it's it's the antithesis of the, the old school, drive people to your website, they search on jobs, they apply for the job, then you ask them 40 questions to, you know, ask them questions to register a profile, Ask them questions, you know, that they have to go no go on, you know, those screening mm -hmm. knockout questions. The bot is facilitating that whole process from the first touch point and roping them into a conversational style uh, dialogue that will create all that stuff for them. And so it makes it a natural experience from start to end, as I understand it. Yeah. Yeah. What if somebody's not ready to apply for the job? They're just kind of checking it out. Is there a, a way for them to say, I'm not ready right now, but maybe keep me in mind for future? Yeah, so, you know, the, the platform has the ability to, um, you know, put talent that interacts with the brand into different talent pools. So, you know, the, the users who have such, a, uh, such an experience, right, or such an uh, intent to be contacted at a later point in time, right? We put them in a specific talent pool and through automation, we re-engage them based on when they hit that threshold, right? Um, and one of the things that um, Carl will find interesting is um, most people that end up taking a job tend to be passive candidates, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we do is as part of this profile creation, we can instantly recommend positions that may draw their attention, which may then say, hey, you know, which may make the candidate go, let me check this out, right? And then you may actually end up finding someone. Nice. There are some interesting things you see. Yeah. Sorry, my phone is ringing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, you know, I think that's really great because you're now building a future talent pool. You're also addressing the immediate needs with a high touch experience. And then, you know, the uh, the tool is doing all the work. What if they get, you know, they're getting through the questions Is their ability to do a, a one like a candidate to record answers to a recorded video interview. Uh, so at the end of the day, the recruiter is getting a prepackaged candidate. It's already been interviewed and then scheduled into their interview calendar. Does it go that far or does it stop at some point? No, absolutely. I mean, <clears throat> what you said, right? We call it creating a, a you know, um, enhanced profile or enriched profile, so to speak, right? So based on your interaction and based on what we gather from your resume or one or two questions, right? We then can administer those necessary tests and assessments. So when the conversation ends, Right. And, you know, you can even schedule when you want to talk either to the hiring manager directly or to the recruiter. And when you schedule that, the hiring manager or recruiter is getting a lot more valuable information. So by the time they're talking to you, right, they've already uh, gone to a point where the amount of time they have to invest in making that hiring decision goes down significantly. And is there a, uh, a target candidate that this works best for? Is this uh, hourly level? Because originally you were talking about warehouse staff, and I know that's a big challenge for many yeah. clients today is getting hourly talent back to work. Uh, or does it also go all the way up to a certain level? Yeah, so today our platform is you know, deployed in, uh, <clears throat> in healthcare, in travel nursing, staffing. Uh, it's deployed in IT staffing, in office clerical staffing, and light industrial. You know, though we started in light industrial, <clears throat> you know, one of the things, um, I mean, we actually feel fortunate to have started there because you're solving for the most difficult, um, you know, um, to source and, 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 you know, manage 
through the hiring workflow, right? Um, and, to, and to answer your question, some of these technologies, right? The way we have built it is it's not one size fits all, right? So we tailor these conversations and these flows based on the industry vertical and also based on where exactly you're engaging talent, right? If it is a redeployment or a re-engagement type of touch point, then the conversation may be different as opposed to your first time initial interaction with the brand, right? Yeah. That makes sense. And I know there's, uh, you know, people are probably thinking there's a lot of bots and chat bots and tools out there that you have to bolt on your ATS. And, you know, it's nice that yours is kind of end to end integrated from that first touch point and takes it all the way to the end of the process. Um, and you mentioned earlier about building brand ambassadors to improve the referral power. Do you also data mine past candidates in their database on an automated basis and invite them to come back and re-engage on future opportunities? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We, and you know, we have um, we have seen scenarios where that re-engagement actually ended up, you know, creating placements. For example, we we had a use case where. Um, you know, a candidate was <clears throat> was ruled out as not a good fit through the whole parsing and matching, but through the re-engagement touch point where the conversational bot got the most current resume and created this enriched profile <clears throat> and updated that candidate profile within the ATS, they ended up being ranked as a candidate that should be seriously considered for the position, right? So, <clears throat> you know, it's... it's um, it's a situation where we constantly try to engage and and keep the talent, you know, um, uh, interacting with the brand. Fantastic. And then, how does it get referrals from outside the uh, outside to come in? Is there a mechanism for that? Yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, the way um, the way we have built the referral component in the platform is it creates that viral network effect, right? So anyone who has, um, you know, access to this, um, anyone who has access to the solution, um, <clears throat> Carl, I'm gonna pause just for a second. Okay. Uh, you, you froze up, so I don't know if that caused any effect. Um, uh, yeah, it, it blacked out on my end for a second. So let's go back. Um, they'll edit this part out. So I think I'm back, you're back. Yeah. Um, so I think the question, so the question I have is around supercharging that, you know, candidate as a referral source for other candidates using your candidate pool as a way to be a brand ambassador and bring other people to the jobs that you have open. And I recall there was some mechanism or some feature that you had that was rather unique around that. How does that work? Yeah, so within the platform, <clears throat> you know, we have, we, you know, you start with your seed population, right? That your existing talent community, so to speak. And, you know, the brand ambassadors within that community have the ability to uh, leverage their professional and social networking uh, outlets to um, start drawing attention to the brand or positions within the brand, right? And then what we have created is we have created a multi-level marketing type of a structure where you can track, trace, and attribute and create a true multi-level marketing model in how you manage and, and source referrals, right? So, you know, I could structure it where I get compensated a certain amount for referring you. And then if you referred somebody, you and I could get compensated a different amount, right? So that creates that viral effect to start bringing and expanding your talent community, right? Bringing talent and expanding your talent community. We have also made it easy for anyone, right? That has access to your sourcing tool to actually play the role of a recruiter. And they would do that because there is an incentive associated with it, right? So we have also created a crowdsource recruiting model so now you have a multi-level referral network, and then you have a crowdsource recruiting model that creates, you know, that basically takes the referral concept to a completely different uh, domain, so to speak. 
Yeah, and I think that therein lies the really innovative and unique differentiator compared to other things I've seen in the market in the last couple of years is you basically have not only is it a platform that is going to leverage AI to help streamline and enhance that candidate experience and recruiting process for the internal recruiters, but it's also going to take every candidate that touches your, your brand and turn them into a brand ambassador and potentially a way to crowdsource their networks by incenting them, right? Sure. If they choose to opt into that part of the program to share the job with their networks and get compensated, you know, if you just if you yeah. decide to turn that feature on. So now you've got candidates becoming recruiters to help you fill those difficult jobs yeah. in addition to themselves being a candidate for the opportunity. I guess that would also go for the uh, people in your database as well, or yep. even people in your company. Absolutely, <laughs> you got it. Yeah, that's brilliant. You've kind of taken, a, a, you know, a recruiter's job and just multiplied it by thousands <laughs> with a click of a button, which is really great. Um, just being sensitive to time here, what what would you say is an ideal client that would you know, fit your solution in terms of the volume of opportunities uh, that they probably have that makes sense for the investment and the types of roles and needs. We've talked a little bit about some of those earlier. Yeah, for us, you know, from a, um, <clears throat> obviously volume um, is, is critical, right? So we typically tend to look at, you know, mid, mid market to high, you know, higher markets. And usually, um, you know, it has to be, um, you know, uh, <clears throat> from a from a industry vertical standpoint. So far, we've seen really good success in uh, in healthcare, where it's more of a you know travel nursing, per diem, and allied type of services, right? Yeah. Locum locum tenants maybe not, right? Because you know they they they're a different uh, uh, set of population, so to speak, right? Yeah. And IT is another area we've seen a lot of good success. Um, <clears throat> light industrial, it depends on how you structure the referral programs and how you proactively manage it, right? So I think there you need to kind of layer in uh, one or two different pieces to fully harness the potential. Um, I mean, you know, Carl, to be, I mean, just based on what we have seen, we have not been confined to, hey, this is the only vertical where you're going to succeed. Um, so the, the three that I've mentioned to you, we've been successful in all three of those. That's great. Well, I think you've got uh, a really you know, interesting approach to this solution and into the marketplace that definitely stands out amongst some of the you know, traditional bots and tools that companies may be looking at. Uh, I love the fact that you've got three different components as we talked about the crowdsourcing sourcing brand ambassador feature to get referrals from the candidate pool and from your employees and to track that and incent them financially. It's a huge challenge for companies combined with the AI automation of making that whole candidate experience of engaging with your brand, going through the application process, more conversational, less of a, a you know, go and fill out this and jump through a million hoops before you hit enter kind of scenario. Um, so I, I think there's a lot here and I think a, a lot of employers, if they're able to experience this, are going to see value. What do you see on the roadmap? What's coming down the future that you care, you know, you'd like to <laughs> kind of give us a glimmer or an insight into? Yeah, for us, uh, <clears throat> Carl, you know, we, we continue down that, that mindset of wanting to help people find happiness in work, right? So our focus is increasingly going to be on the whole AI kind of, you know, carrier pathing, upward mobility, and things of that nature, right? I, we feel like we have a very good um, platform that addresses all of the core pieces of talent journey that will help us start creating these data sets. And we are starting to build these data models that, you know, based on personas, be able to direct someone to, you know, go to a, 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 take a different approach, right? Mm -hmm. And as part of that also, you know, 
being able to uh, um, identify training opportunities and things like that. And we're also doing some interesting stuff that uh, you know we'll, we'll share when when we're ready to launch <laughs> um, employee well-being and, uh, and and some creative concepts around eliminating true bias in uh, <clears throat> in in training data as it relates to DNI, right? Yes. So those that's are some a, of the things that we're working on. I think that's you're you're going down the exact right path because whenever AI comes into the discussion with clients, we've had discussions with the the legal team. You know, is always very focused on well, if it's only looking at data around one type of population, how does it not map that to and and apply it to everybody? and therefore create bias in the process. So the fact that you recognize that and are addressing that could be a situation is is really uh, going down the right path. <laughs> so, well, I think we're up against our time uh, today. Salim, thank you for speaking with me and educating us on all the unique value and you know ideas that you put into Work Llama and making it the new 20, 21st, 22nd century recruiting tool for the future, especially for organizations that want to improve candidate experience and you know want to think a little bit out of the box on how to source talent through crowdsourcing techniques. So I look forward to seeing more in the marketplace. And again, thank you for your time today. Thanks, Carl. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. My pleasure.